Hey good people, Batavia here. Next project up is the beds that we need to plant in that I plan on overwintering spinach. And I am going to push aside any thoughts of this being too late in my season. I'm gonna be confident that at some point next spring I'll have spinach based on what I'm planting today. Um, so first step is gonna be to clear this space. I need to add some additional soil as a next step. Well, let me take a step back. Clearing the space is a couple of things here. I'm gonna transplant the cilantro that has volunteered because I haven't had fresh cilantro since the spring, not from the garden at least. Well, actually, cilantro I've had from the store, so that's not fresh, but you get my point. So I haven't had cilantro from the garden since this spring. Um, I'm gonna to toss all of the sunflower volunteers. There are plenty of them. Um, mustards I'll take in with me and cook up. Um, I'll probably just cut up the, um, whatever the garlic sprouts are. I'm not sure what to call them. I still haven't looked it up. I'll cut those, not cut those out. Let's pull those up. So anything that I feel like is edible that's here, I'll go ahead and take that into the kitchen with me. I'm gonna actually pot up the cilantro. So we're gonna try to keep that growing over the next several weeks inside. Cause remember again, cold's coming. Cilantro will probably be fine, but no sense in leaving this stuff out here as it relates to the cilantro any longer than I really have to. Um, and then next step will be to add additional soil. There's a, a divot of sorts in the middle of the longer bed from where the sunflowers were and when I pull those up. When I do things like pull up plants, I try to shake out as much of the soil from the roots as I can so that doesn't go to waste, but it's still left a hole there. So we'll add some soil, add some compost. This will be like me working up a bed if I'm planting at the beginning of the season, like going back to the spring. Um, so it's kind of cool that I'll be able to do that and share that now, although we're wrapping up the season in Chicago. I also still have garlic to plant, but that'll be a separate video. All right, so yeah, let's do that. And then I don't know if I'm keeping track of my steps here. I don't know if you're keeping track of them. After we get the bed worked up, I will also, of course, sow the seeds. I'll go ahead and add some mulch. Then I will add my hoops, which I use. It's you know, PVC pipe that I'll use for hoops. For today, our final step will be covering the beds with the netting that I use. And that's gonna be for short term. I'm only covering it now because I've had all of the garden squirrels <laughs> come and visit the garden and then start to dig and bury things and dig for things. So I wanna make sure that they don't dig up my freshly sowed beds. And ultimately, because I'm planning on overwintering this, the bed will be covered with plastic. Um, and that's again, what was recommended as it relates to this variety, giant winter spinach is what we're gonna be sowing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's our list. That's what we have to do today. So my plan was to transplant the cilantro into this container and basically take it indoors and let it grow, continue to grow under lights. But looking at the size of these plants, I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my, okay, this is one of the summer pots for flowers that I've gotten over the years. I typically save these things, you know, they stack pretty easily. So I'm gonna add some fresh, potting soil since this is going indoors and I'm going to try to take as little of this kind of outdoor soil inside with me as possible uh, so that's the plan here I have probably like 10 or 12 cilantro plants of different size maybe I'll do both the larger ones will go into this container and the smaller ones will go into this container so let me get my soil loaded up into these two and then we'll get them transplanted in for me, it's easier to do this kind of thing by hand, although generally when working with soil like this, it's recommended to wear gloves. So today is the 26th and I have been trying for the last three days to get out here to get this done. And it's just been raining and wet basically every other day. And that's pretty typical fall weather, right? So the lesson that I have to learn every year is do it when you can, right? Don't put it off. Your time is limited when it comes to what's happening in the garden and how much time you have to work. Conditions aren't necessarily always playing in your favor this time of year. It's not like kind of midsummer where, you know, if I don't get it done today, tomorrow will very likely be just fine. 
Um, same kind of thing happens in the spring, you know, when it comes to weather not always being on your side. So I'll, I'll file that lesson away to remind myself next spring as well. And I get a lot done in the garden and I'm always pleased with the work that I put in, but I am a procrastinator. I am looking for kind of, you know, the mood to strike for me to do some of these things. Uh, so one of those weird bits of like, you know, give me a reason not to do the thing that I've been putting off and I'll take that reason. Uh, but we're here now, um, it's midday and we're gonna go ahead and get this done. As I mentioned, when we were working in that other raised bed, you know, we have a frost coming uh, next week, even a freeze. And another thing I know about myself is that as much as I enjoy this right now, like right now I'm out here, the only thing that's gonna drive me in is some pretty hard rain and the fact that I decided to do this work before I had my lunch. Um, the temps are ideal right you know so but as much as I enjoy this I know next week I'm gonna go through some kind of like shell shock initially when that temperature drops and I'm not gonna really want to be out here for those first couple of days because even though for us we are getting our first frost basically right on time and our first freeze it looks like is coming right behind it um, We'll still, I mean, we're going to have like a 60 degree day at some point, you know, in November. Um, but we are also going to have pretty frequent frost and freezes too. And so that's one of the reasons why, it looks like I have more plants than I, I thought. That's one of the reasons why it's just time to say goodbye to the summer plants and anything that's tender. Um, that And tender meaning, you know, it's not going to survive the cold temps and or constant cold temps. So why don't we do this? Let me dig up all of these so I can get an idea. I pulled the second pot out because I figured I'd need more room. And just generally I'm trying to keep the leaves clean. None of these have started to bolt yet because we have had some like kind of bouncy weather. Um, you know, trying to get down to the root. Today is 60 something, you know, this week, earlier in the week, it was 70 degrees. You know, we're going to get down to 50, you know, so these plants don't like that. Um, but the cilantro has been, been doing pretty well with it. I, um, I don't know. I, I don't know how many years or if I will ever get over the joy of volunteers. This is an example of I've not planted cilantro back here in years. So what you see here are volunteers from plants that volunteered, which I just can't get enough of. I'm going to go ahead and get this finished up and then we'll move on to the next step here. All right, we got caught by the rain, but that gave me a chance to enjoy lunch and we're back at it. We're about halfway through, everything is clear. Now we just need to get into prepping the bed for our new seating, all right? So let's dig into that. All righty, so generally I have pulled most of the weeds or anything that I don't want to grow back up here. And I just wanna get a good look at how much soil I have. And keep an eye out for surprises like this. Potato. <laughs> I harvested potatoes out of this bed back in August. So, I mean, this is, it's firm, so it's a good potato. See if I can remember to take that inside with me. So I thought about this a bit and because we are planting now in October, near November, we'll have this under cover. We'll expect spinach to pop up and grow in the early part of spring. I essentially won't get a chance to work in this bed until I'm transitioning from spring to planting out summer crops. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this bed up a little bit more. And this is something I probably do once a season for each of the beds. And this is just making sure I don't have any really compacted soil. So because everything is so damp, it's a little bit misleading 
But all in all, I think the soil looks pretty good. And I'm actually, I'm gonna go ahead for the same reason and add a bag of soil. I was gonna say I'm actually considering not adding more soil, but again, I won't get a chance to do anything new to this bed until probably May going into June. Definitely May, let's, let's shoot for that. Because this should be my new home for tomatoes next year. Spoiler, <laughs> that's the plan at this point. So we are rounding third here. Beds are worked up as far as the soil that exists in the beds. Before I level things out, I wanna add my new soil to the larger bed, the one that sits about seven feet by four feet. That bed sits at nine inches tall. And so I wanna make sure as I'm adding soil, I leave enough room to also add mulch after I plant. Now the bed that sits in front, the smaller one at four by four feet, it's a little bit taller. There's a bit more room for soil. And as I worked up the bed, I'm just gonna end up adding compost to that one. There's no need to add additional soil to that. So let's go ahead and wrap this bit up and we will finally get to planting. We'll cover the beds and we will call this project done. Interestingly enough, this is the easiest part. And I'm just using one of the stakes here to make my lines. I am going to, I don't know, that's probably about six inches apart. I'm gonna sew them in rows with about six inches in between. And this isn't gonna be exact and that's okay. Um, but now I can get basically, what's that, four rows of spinach in across both of these beds. Assuming that things germinate, I don't plan on doing any thinning this year because everything that pops up may not make it through the winter and then begin to grow next spring. So I'm gonna be a bit liberal when it comes to these seeds. These are probably about four years old and I'm generally not too concerned about whether or not they'll germinate, but I kind of have like one shot at this. Of course I could come back in based on what doesn't come up next spring and sow spinach just like I would if I was just planting it in the spring but it'd be nice to be able to have two beds producing early in the spring before I even get out here. And for the things that are being sown pretty close together, I could always thin next year. I could take some of the smaller leaves as baby spinach and let the larger ones grow up. There are a bunch of different options here. One of the benefits for the bed, like behind me, this is my new Vego bed, in beds that are that height, is you don't have to kind of do this crouching and sitting and so on. But the majority of my beds in the garden are this size. And one of the things that you consider when building them is you wanna make sure you can get to the middle of the bed from either side. And so I can basically do that I'll do the other side from that side. I mentioned this in the work I was doing in the raised beds and the cage baby the other day. I think that was in last week's video. It's a little bit inconvenient only being able to get into the bed from one side, right? Um, so this is more convenient. This is probably the most convenient. So I'll pay for this, you know, over the next day or so. The bending and the crouching, but it's definitely well worth it. And this goes by a bit faster, right? Instead of scooting around on my favorite milk crate. So I'm just patting the soil on top of the seeds. Because remember, these are sown pretty thinly at an eighth of an inch to a fourth of an inch. And I also want to account for the leaves I'm going to put on top. PVC pipes that I basically repurpose throughout the garden. I tend to leave them a bit higher 
than what's really needed for this bed just because some of my other beds like when I'm covering collard greens they need to be higher because of how tall those greens get but for the purpose of the spinach I could really use some lower hoops but I always pause with cutting them because once you cut them they're done they started off as 10 footers I probably cut them down to about seven feet, which works pretty well. They're half an inch around, and then I'm sliding them into um, the clamps that I use that basically stay on the sides of these wooden beds. So that works out really well. I put a pole across the top. It doesn't really help or hurt anything when it comes to using the netting, but it absolutely does help once you get to the point of me adding plastic and we get into winter where snow was going to pile up. So having the hoops and then having that one pipe that's gonna go across, I'll add another one to get to the end of the second bed. It helps a lot because the snow can really just slide off without it caving in the plastic. Um, so once we get to the point of transitioning from the netting to the plastic, which is probably going to be sometime in December, basically when we start to get regular snow, I will think about whether or not I want to leave the height for these PVC pipes in the tunnel that I've created or if I want to cut it down. And the only reason again that I consider cutting it down is the more space between the beds and the top of the hoops is the more air, cold air that's going to be circulating. And we know that the spinach, even in the spring, won't get tall enough to reach the top of these beds. But we'll figure that out once we get there. Super pleased with everything that we got done, although it did take a couple of days to get it done. We are done for now. And before I let you go, I want to show you the cilantro because it's bounced back from the initial weathering that you'll get once you transplant something. Um, so it's looking good and then it'll make its way inside. Uh, so yeah. Okay, Doug, so with wrapping this project up, our next video is going to be the last full garden tour of the season. So I want to be able to share what the garden looks like before this cold snap comes in, before we get frost and freezing temps, before I start pulling plants out. Let's see what's still in the garden and what's still doing pretty well, all things considered. So we'll do that. If you have any questions or comments on this video or any other, feel free to drop it below. And I look forward to seeing y'all on the next one.